Hey friends, Ableton 11.1 .1 is finally out with full Apple Silicon support. So those of us who have these slick little M1 computers can benefit from the fastest and most efficient computer technology available to music producers yet. But many users of M1 computers are still a bit confused about plugin compatibility and they don't understand why their plugins aren't showing up in the new Ableton. So let me break it down for you. Ableton released 11.1 .1 as what they're calling Mac OS Universal. This means that Ableton can run most or all of its processing silicon native, depending upon what you, the user, decide to do. If you're on the Universal build, but you still need to run plugins that aren't yet silicon native, you can do that using their audio unit or AU versions, provided that they're compatible with silicon. This is where the universal comes in. If you use audio units, Ableton will launch Rosetta 2 in the background and use that to bridge the old school Intel builds of those plugins so you can still run them on the new Ableton. If that's confusing, here's a simple breakdown. If you're using Ableton 11.1 .1 Universal with only Ableton devices such as Operator and Hybrid Reverb, that means that you're completely silicon native. Next, if you're on 11.1 .1 Universal using Ableton devices and the VST plugins that actually show up in the VST browser folder, that means you're still completely silicon native. Now if however you're running 11.1 .1 Universal and you're using AU plugins because your VST plugins won't show up, that means that you're using Ableton silicon native, but with Rosetta working in the background for just the plugins. Now what if your plugins don't show up at all? Well, if you're running 11.1 .1 Universal and your VST plugins don't show up in your VST folder in the browser, that's because either the developers haven't released a silicon native version of their VSTs, or you haven't downloaded and installed their updated versions yet. If you want to know which developers have released silicon native versions of their VST plugins, you can see it up here. Now, there's also going to be a situation where some plugins won't even work on your Silicon Ableton, or won't even show up in your AU folder, or won't even work on your M1 computer. That's because there are three levels of M1 compatibility that each separate plugin developer is at. First, there isn't a Rosetta compatible version at all, so it doesn't even show up on your computer or it doesn't run. Two, the plugin will work, but it needs Rosetta 2. Or three, the developers are awesome and they created a Silicon native version of the plugin. Fortunately, most devs are at least at stage two, meaning that you can run the universal build of 11.1, .1, but still use Rosetta 2 to bridge their audio units. Now, if you're on an M1 computer, you can also install the Intel version of 11.1, .1, but that means that any VST or audio unit at stage two will work, but just know that the entire instance of Ableton when you run the Intel version is using Rosetta 2, and you're not getting the maximum CPU benefits that the native silicon version can give you. Doing this might even make plugins that won't show up at all on the Universal side actually show up in the Intel side. So those of you that can't find your plugins at all, you might benefit from trying to install the Intel version. But I will say those of you who are using the M1 Pros or M1 Max computers probably won't even hit the roof of your processor whether you're using the silicon native version or not. Even my little M1 Air here has never hit the max CPU load with the Intel build unless I purposefully made it do so by launching a bunch of hungry plugins in a stress test. But it's also fair to say that this M1 is the max build out. It has the 16 gigabytes of RAM and so on. Okay, so maybe you're wondering why did Ableton do this hybrid approach? Well, because essentially this allows users to take advantage of the silicon technology and save CPU processing while still remaining compatible with legacy Intel audio unit plugins. Unfortunately, some developers are seriously slacking behind in releasing silicon native versions of their software, and we as producers don't have time to wait on them. So if a developer you know hasn't released a silicon native version of your favorite plugin yet, do us all a favor and put the pressure on them via forums and emails. It's no secret that music producers love Apple products. It's crazy how long this silicon tech has been out and yet how far behind some of these plugin developers actually are. And it's even more frustrating because some of the bigger companies like Native Instruments and Isotope still haven't released silicon native versions. Meanwhile, it's obvious that their marketing operations for Black Friday and their consistent sales they run take serious time and resources. I'm sure the marketing department at Isotope has more employees than the dev department and that's a real shame. Meanwhile, I gotta hand it to hyper pro companies like FabFilter, Sugarbytes, Spectrosonics, x for Records, and so on for rolling out native silicon versions even sooner than Ableton could. This is no small thing, and this means that there's no excuse for the other plug-in juggernauts who have many more employees and many more resources not to put their effort and energy into taking care of their customers instead of taking care of their wallets. 
Now, I don't mean to put the dev departments of these big plugin companies on blast. I'm sure they feel the heat. I'm sure they're working super hard. And I'm also sure that it's probably the CEOs in suits preferring marketing and preferring spending resources toward marketing versus spending resources toward developing silicon native versions of their plugins. One way or another, Ableton releasing silicon native software as well as other DAWs doing the same will eventually force these large companies to have to act sooner or later. To be fair, Isotope and Native Instruments have released Rosetta 2 compatible versions of their software, but I would consider this stage 2 thing to be the bare minimum and not worthy of the size and power that these companies have to hire folks and do the work. Anyway, hopefully this video is helpful for you to understand how to get your plugins working with Ableton on your new M1 computer. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe. Much love everybody. See you next time.